<laughs> Psalm 84. <clears throat> you know, that Psalm 119 is a kicker. If I ever preach from Psalm 119 and read it all, we will be in trouble. Psalm 84. We're going to look mainly at the last two verses, but I do want to read the chapter. It's only 12 verses long. These things, I'm to the point where it's, I don't know if it's better with or without these, but we're going to try it with them. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. Selah. Think on this, if you will. That the creation praises God and we long to praise God. Verse number five. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee in whose heart are the ways of them who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. Way well, I understand it, Selah means think on this. And <clears throat> I won't try to bore you with too much detail there, but the valley of Baca is the valley of sorrow. So even that guy that's going through the deepest travail, the deepest sorrow, the deepest difficulties that we can imagine can go from strength to strength if uh, he is in Christ, if the Lord is his, okay? The Lord will hear our prayers. Let's start in verse 9. Behold, O God, our shield, look upon the face of thine anointed, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be the doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory, and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you so much for your word. I thank you that it is forever settled in heaven, that it is unchanging. And I thank you that it not only guides us and directs us, Lord, but it encourages us with the victories that we see in other believers from other generations' lives. Lord, we love you, and we pray that you'd work in our lives today. For it's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. So the whole thing is basically this little psalm. This, and a psalm is a song. <clears throat> and the song was basically praising God, and then he's given all the glory to God. A day in, in God's house, a day in God's kingdom is better than a thousand days, okay? I had rather be the doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of, of wickedness. So just being the greeter, opening the door is better than doing anything else. For or because, the sense of the word for there is because the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. What is a sun? What does the sun do for us? Well, the sun brings growth. The sun brings direction. We can see by night. Now, today we have what I would call false suns. We have those spiritually and we have those practically. In other words, there was a time when the sun went down, most all work quit, right? Because you didn't have lighting. Didn't have night church because you didn't have lighting to speak of other than, than candles and things of that nature. So night church was a rare thing, though it did happen some. The sun, <clears throat> today we have stuff that keeps us busy all the time. And, and <clears throat> I hesitate to quote the person that said it, but I think busy uh, is a pretty good acronym for being under Satan's yoke. B-U-S-Y. We get so busy, we don't have time to read our Bibles. We don't have time to talk to the Lord. And yet we know, especially when we're in the valley of Baca, the valley of sorrows, the valley of difficulty, whether it be the difficulty that your family uh, girls face right now or, or the difficulty that, that uh, you know, I don't, the difficulty of a coming birth, the difficulty of whatever you might be facing, we need you know, the, the busyness keeps us away from the Lord, and we need to long after him. And you know, we, we learned in Sunday school this morning that giving takes two things, okay? He gave us five reasons that we give, but the two things that giving takes, according to me, this is what I heard him say, and I don't know if this was part of his outline or not, but it takes determination and sacrifice to give to the Lord, Okay. Well, it takes determination and sacrifice to depend upon the Lord to be our son, to 
to let him guide our thoughts, to let him guide our decisions. It's real easy to make decisions based on what we think or based on circumstances or based on the political atmosphere, based on it might offend this person, it might offend that person. <clears throat> you know, when the fellow brought it to my attention that I had offended somebody this week with one of the scripture texts I sent out, you know, that, that, that brings up a, a desire on my part to try to go run and fix that, Channing, but it was the word of God that was that was offensive. I mean, and, and, and history itself, I, I don't see where I should go run and try to fix it because he didn't even tell me he was offended. He told somebody else, right? So it, I have to let the word of God be my son and direct me. It's the shield, okay? I want to, why, why do I want to go fix it? Well, honestly, nobody likes to have somebody mad at them, do they? It doesn't matter if you don't like that person. You don't really like to have them mad at you. Even, you know, various trials that people have been under for seven months and, and the, the disappointment and the, and, the, and the dysfunctionality and all of that, really, as much as it makes us angry, we really want to fix it, right? But it's the Lord who's got to be our son to guide us and our shield to protect us. You say, well, he let, for instance, Brother Randy get cancer. But according to this Bible, that was the best thing for Brother Randy. Because the Bible says he doesn't withhold anything from them that walk uprightly that's good. Now, it's hard for me to understand how that would be good. I, very thankful that sort of thing. I may get it tomorrow, Miss Kendra, but to my knowledge, that sort of thing doesn't run in my family. Obesity runs in my family because we like to eat. But I don't know of anybody that, that died of cancer in my family except somebody that smoked way on up into their 70s. But it's the Lord that's our son. He's our shield to protect us. He'll give grace. What is grace? Define grace. Very good. God's riches at Christ's expense. What did you say, Sister Janice? Grace is mercy. Grace is, grace is, it takes grace to be saved, but it takes grace to serve. It takes grace to live. It takes grace to read the word of God. Grace is, in this context, it is his mercy. It is also his riches. It is his empowerment. I can't preach. I mean, honestly, Miss Kendra, I, I waited months, maybe even years to get saved because I didn't want to preach. And even before I got saved, I knew that at some point, if I got saved, I'd be preaching. To the point, when I was in my 20s, I used to tell people I would die before I was 30 because I knew I was not doing what God wanted me to do. And I knew he's not going to let you go on if you know what's right and you're not doing what's right. <clears throat> it's the Lord that gives us the grace to do what's right and the glory. That goes back to the, this is really kind of repetitive, okay? He's a son and a shield. He will give grace and glory. What is glory? Andrew, what's glory? We've all seen it come short of the glory of God. In any context in Scripture, what's glory? Channing? Miss Janice? Brother Jerry? We use this word all the time. It means brightness. It is, huh? Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah is a great example of glory. Thank you. Do you know what we don't have? What kind of we don't? What kind of headlights do we have today from the factory, Charles? What kind of headlights do we have today? That's what we used to have. I thought they had gone away from halogen to some other thing. But halogen, the word halogen is the same place we get our word hallelujah. It means to, to shed light on. When we say hallelujah, we are shedding light on Jah. Or Yah, which is an Old Testament contraction for Jehovah, and Jehovah is whom in the new is who in the New Testament? That would be Jesus. Amen. Jesus is Jehovah. Jehovah is Jesus. They are one and the same. It's just an Old Testament word and a New Testament word. Okay. <clears throat> The, the name Jesus means Savior, and Jehovah is the one who saves and keeps. He is the God who saves and keeps. Hallelujah is we're putting halogen or light on the name of Jehovah or of Jesus. That glory is basically the same idea. In other words, 
It's kind of like 1 Peter chapter 5. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 that we humble ourselves under the, under the Almighty God and He will lift us up in due time. Now, I didn't quote that exactly right, so y'all don't shoot me, but the idea is the same. If we humble ourselves to God, everybody wants this, we want that, we want the other thing, but God will lift us up in due time. You might say, I mean, I can think of people who would want to have their child in church that's not in church. Hey, what? Well, some of that's going to depend upon the child, but... <clears throat> It's God that's going to bring that to pass. He's going to give you the words to say. He's going to give you the life in front of that child. He's going to bring glory to himself through you. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. There are people that come to church every week that I know for a fact are lost, that I want to see saved. I'm not being judgmental, Miss Kendra. There, there are people that come to our church regularly who have said, no, I'm not saved. No, I'm not ready to be saved. Said it tearfully. Well, hey, when it's the Lord's time, they'll get saved. That's between them and the Lord. The Lord is the sun. He lights our way. He guides us. He's the shield to protect us. And he'll give grace. That's his empowerment to preach. Man, I mean, I just want to, and, and I've heard, of, I'm hot. I've heard other preachers say it, and I don't think it's God's will. Because no place in scripture is it found that I'm supposed to convince you to be saved. Okay, it's no place that there is no place in Scripture that I'm supposed to convince you to serve Jesus. I'm just supposed to preach the word. And what you do with the word is between you and the Lord. But if I have preached the word, I can hold up bloodless hands because I've told the truth. If I tell you that it's God calls us all to, to be faithful to give and to be faithful to give the word, give the word, give the finances so that somebody else can give the word and to give the word ourselves, then whether you give the finances or give the word, I'm guiltless. And the same thing is true of you. When you witness to that person in life, you say, but I want him to get saved today. Hey, when it's time, the Lord's going to bring that to pass. No good thing will he withhold from them. You say, so does that mean for 100% sure they're going to get saved? I'm sorry, it doesn't mean that. But it does mean this, Miss Kendra. The Bible says he's not willing that any should perish. So if they go to hell, they go to hell over the prayers of the saints and over the blood of the Savior because he's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. The Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. I mean, there, there's been times in my life when I wanted to see God bring something to pass in my life, in my ministry life, if you will. But it must not have been a good thing for it to come to pass because he didn't let it come to pass, Tiffany. No good thing. We get it in our mind that what we see is good is omniscient. But we're not omniscient, are we? There are things that we want to see happen, whether it be financially, whether it be spiritually. But if the Lord doesn't bring it to pass, was it really a good thing for us? The Lord God is a sun. He lights our way. He's a shield. He protects us. That doesn't mean he protects us by our own thoughts and what we think is right. He gives us what he sees as best. He will give grace. That is the riches of God, the mercy of God, the power of God to go through the valley of Baca or any other difficulty. He also gives us the, the I don't want to act like that. the things of God are only difficult. There are blessings. But what do we tend to do if we're not careful? What do we tend to do in the times of blessings? There's two things I think all Christians tend to do, one or the other. Either A, we presume upon God and we take him for credit, or B, we take the credit for, well, I saved my money, so I was able to do this. No, God brought that to pass. He put the goodness in your heart and the, the work in your, the grace for you to bring that to pass, it's God. He said, well, he let this happen. Why did he let this happen? Why did he let that church split? Why did he let that preacher get into sin? Why did he let that church split? Why did he let that preacher's wife get into sin? Why did, I mean, I mean there's, I'm thinking of multiple churches, okay? Why did he let uh, this guy at that church take a quarter million dollars of the church's money and go away with it. I can tell you this, after the guy walked away with a quarter million dollars from the church, the church got serious about calling on God. 
and when I left that particular church, they were running 400, and they'd started with about 40 and a quarter million dollars in debt in a building that was half finished because the guy that was supposed to do the church for the quarter million dollars, Brother Jerry, he blacked her in, took the money, and jetted. Boom. So their church is not even half done, and, and their loan is, you know, they borrowed money to build the church. But when I left that church to go to the mission field, they were running four, 450 on Sunday, seeing somebody saved nearly every week. Things that we see as a difficult, like the, there's a church in Columbus that we know of is having a very difficult time right now. But the Lord God is still a son and a shield. He'll still give grace and glory. And the Bible is clear. No good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. O Lord God, O Lord of hosts, blessed, that means unbelievably happy and satisfied, is the man that trusteth in thee. That's the truth for all of us, is where is our trust? It's like we talked about last week. Fear is amoral. It is neither right nor wrong. Fear is right or wrong based upon the object of that fear. Are we fearing the Lord? That's powerful. Are we fearing circumstance? That's pitiful. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your people that have come out here today. And I pray that you would take this simple message.